Few on Grant Street care about the youth. I do. We have to be fit, physically, financially, and as a community. Meg Barnhouse provides the next selection, a story called Diamonds. It was fall baseball, mid-season. My breath came out in clouds. Wrapped in the plaid wool blanket my mother bought 25 years ago for a camping trip, I was starting to shiver. My canvas chair wasn't doing much to keep out the cold. I had a thermos of coffee, though. The sky was green, fading up to deep black and pierced with stars. My ten-year-old was up to bat, and I was completely happy. The ump grunted as he bent over to brush the dust off home plate. He was calling strikes when I thought the ball was low, but he did it even-handedly with both teams, so it was all right. The boys in the outfield shifted from foot to foot, crouched over, ready to catch the big one. The batter, my son, tapped home plate twice with his bat, thinking about being a hero. Standing next to me, the pitcher's dad called out, Throw hard! Hit the target! Watch the runners! Parents were huddled on the metal bleachers. Some dads stood with their hands jammed in their pockets, talking to each other, keeping their eyes on the field. Somebody's little brother in a bright yellow jacket strode past me four or five times eating popcorn, looking purposeful taking care of whatever business keeps five-year-olds going. Every so often, the parents on one set of bleachers would cheer. These days, I don't cheer too much. My son gets embarrassed because I always cheer for the wrong things. Even after three years, I don't know much about the game. I married a man who watched televised sports in front of me for 17 years. To be fair, I knew this about him when I married him. I just didn't realize it would bother me so much. With my resentment grew a resistance to sports. When I try to watch my son's games now, it's as if something blocks my vision and my brain so I have trouble even seeing what's going on, much less understanding it. The resistance is fading gradually, but still I yell, way to watch, and then I find out the poor kid has just struck out. Or I stand up and yell, yay, when our kid slides into home, but the pop fly has been caught and his effort was for nothing. There have been times when I even embarrassed myself. This season I keep quiet, or I just cheer when the other parents do. We were playing an all-star team from another town, so there was slim hope of winning. One of their players was a girl with a blonde ponytail swinging out of the back of her batting helmet. She made the first run of the game for her team with a confident bunt and good steals. She ran fast and hard. I cheered for her softly under my breath, since she was the only baseball girl I'd seen in three years. The game was running late. The other fields had cleared off, and the other parents had gathered their things and gone home. Night deepened. I was pacing to keep warm. Under the lights, the coach was calling out to our batter, You can do it! You're the man! You're the man! Bring it in! Watch it all the way in! When the kid struck out, he patted the boy on the back and told him, Good try! Watching the big man bending down over the boy, offering affection and encouragement, I got the sense that this was a diamond at the heart of the universe. The surrounding sky was vast and cold. The world out there is enormous. People are hating and fighting each other in the Middle East, in the Balkans, in Sierra Leone, in the trailer park out on Highway 9, and in a three-story house in the richest neighborhood in town. Under these lights, in a small town in South Carolina, something was going right. I might be starting to understand baseball after all. Robert Louis Stevenson said, it's the history of our kindnesses that alone makes this world tolerable. If it were not for that, for the effect of kind words, kind looks, kind letters, I should be inclined to think our life a practical jest in the worst possible spirit. <laughs>